This edition of the Science Review is rather special. It comes to you from Arizona. We're at a conference, the Origins Initiative, put on by Arizona State University. Um, largely responsible for that is on my left, Lawrence Krauss. We'll get into that later. You've been watching possibly some of it on the web, and we'll be carrying it on the Science Network later. So this, this is um, a discussion among some of the people who've been here. From on my far left is Richard Dawkins. Next to him, A.C. Grayling. Lawrence Krauss, as I said. On my right, Stephen Pinker and Brian Green. Um, we're going to go through a few issues that deal basically with science and society, science and social policy. And I was going to suggest as a beginning that um, next year is the 350th anniversary of the Royal Society. Um, it's a major event, um, an enterprise that's been going on now essentially at the beginning of what would loosely be called the scientific revolution. And it's um, a, a manifestation to some extent of Francis Bacon's ideas. Um, Bacon wrote this extraordinary utopian book called The New Atlantis, which, despite its flaws, had some wonderful ideas in it, one of which was that they, there were merchants of light uh, on, on this island because their, their, their primary um, commodity that they were exchanging and seeking out was the light of understanding. So at some point next year, we'll be doing a meeting called, uh, in the Beyond Belief series, Beyond Belief, The Merchants of Light, and it will be in the form of essentially a, a shareholder's report about the state of this enterprise of science over this period. So I want to start by asking you, how are we doing? What are the, what are the upsides and the downsides from your own disciplines? Um, what's your sense of, of, of science at this particular time when we have uh, a president in the United States who says he wants to restore science to its um, rightful place on the US agenda and the leader of the house here who also says that her agenda is four words, science, 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 and science. So this is a great opportunity for scientists to speak out about what they're thinking at this point. So who'd like to go first? I will. <laughs> um, I, uh, it, it's, it is a, it's a great opportunity. It's a great challenge. I mean, the, one of the reasons that, that, it's, that it's become so important is, we're, is we are recovering from a time when science was having um, extreme difficulties in terms of being the, the sound basis of public policy. Mm. Eight years in this country where it was really being ignored or censored or distorted. At the same time, and, and this is perhaps more relevant to the, to the group that we have here, there are great challenges, again, in this country but in other places in the world, challenges to the notion of scientific rationality. Uh, and, and I think more than, than any time in perhaps uh, the last century, we are we are at this threshold of, of conflict that that um, that and it's it's hard to know where it's going to go worldwide. So I think the the scientific endeavor is doing fine. We have, as a discipline, suffered in this country and elsewhere because science was not being the basis of sound public policy, which it should be. It should inform public policy. I, the that scientists. No one wants scientists to be decision makers so much as to be able to have the results of empirical study be used by those who are who are empowered by the public to make decisions on, the, on their behalf. And, and we've, we've suffered severely. And, and so that's what makes this so exciting. And it's a time of hope, but I think a great challenge because we suffered tremendously because of, of a lack of sound policy in the past. Yeah. Now, it's no, it's no surprise, is it, before we get another response, it's no surprise I should obviously make the point that, that you guys obviously all believe in this to the extent that you are public faces of science, your public intellectuals, your communicators, uh, Richard, particularly uh, on, on sel the gene uh, selfish gene, evolution stories, but also on the, the God Delusion book and so on, Anthony Grayling, philosophy, um, uh, communication of, of ideas about what is good, what is right, moral issues and so on. Steve, last book, The Stuff of Thought, so very much interested in, 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 in how we think. And, and Brian, the cosmos, the, bit, the big stage. Um, your, your role in this is obviously important. Um, so let's start at this end and, and pick, pick up from where Lawrence started there and see what, what your, your sense is from your place on that. Unless Richard, well, you want to... I, I was just going to say, I, I thought we were talking about the last three, 350 years, not, not current policy in the Oh, United no, but States. you can... You can uh, you're <coughs> absolutely the three, last 350 okay. years. Okay. Do, you, do you want to actually go in now? Well, I, um, I, I thought we decided... <coughs> on two different things. One was the last 350 years and then current policy. 
It sounds as though Lawrence jumped into part two rather than. Well, I, well, I, th I thought he asked at the current time, but may you want to start? Well, you you're, start this you're, all over no, again? no, no, no. You're, okay. all, you're all such <laughs> nimble thinkers that we'll go be between one and the other. Um, I, I actually would make the case. I think I could at least try and make the case that there's something not dissimilar now to then. I mean, the, the 1660 was a time of great turmoil. There was, a, there was just a beginnings in science. Um, the Hook, Wren, Boyle, and so on were just beginning to meet. There were no coffee houses, if you'll recall, in England until 1650. Coffee houses in London in 1652. And if you read Pepys and, and, and John Evelyn, you find that all these um, uh, mechanics and the virtuosi, like, like Wren, Hook, Boyle, and so on, are meeting at these new places. And there's a kind of a coffee internet. There's a, there's a, there's a cognitively enhanced driving engine going on, bringing all these people together into a community, the kind of community of science that Bacon was advocating. I, I, would, I would suggest that after a lot of the, the, the disarray socially that's been going on recently, um, that the, the sort of sense of science now is not radically dissimilar. It's a great opportunity to do the same sort of thing. Well, so Roger, so that, a, that's, that's the yeah, link I wanted to make. It's, it's quite a good point because uh, you, you, we just come out or are in a period of, of turmoil. There's conflict in, in the worlds of a serious kind, which the US is deeply engaged in. And we've got this, this economic difficulty that we find now, just come out of a, uh, a double presidency and you know, two, two terms uh, president who's been very inimical to science. Uh, and uh, um, Lawrence is right about that. And there are some parallels with 1660. The, the Civil War period, the Commonwealth period, the restoration of the monarchy, and so on. So, you know, there, there are these uh, um, superficial analogies yeah. at the very least. But one thing one has to remember is that the foundation of the Royal Society was not just the origin of something, the beginning of something very important in the um, institutionalization of science as an important uh, uh, thing in society, but it was the end product of something, of a hundred years of struggle yes. uh, b between, on the one hand, the emerging empirical <coughs> studies and on the other, reactionary forces, in particular the church, that was made very anxious by some of the things that the new sciences were saying. And the fact that an institution could be set up in 1660 was the mark of, mm -hmm. uh, of a success. That, that you know, there'd been a victory of an intellectual kind uh, at the end of that century that it started with Copernicus and uh, all the great changes there. So it's an important point to remember that, that it's a mark of a stage in a process which has been a longer and, and a richer one. I was focusing on, on the, the notion of, of how do you build a community which is um, engaged with, sympathetic to, supportive of, and doing good science. So. Well, <clears throat> I mean, obviously, the, there's one huge difference between now and then. The science, science has become such a community. That's what, what I think the people at this table uh, are, try to do, is explain to the public how the scientific community works so successfully internationally to, uh, together to change the world. And, and, and that's happened and will continue to happen regardless of the, of the public perception of it. Yeah, but let's, let's yeah. Brian yeah. Hand yeah. point. Let's well, see. it's interesting. You know, you began by asking, you know, how have we done? And we've done really well. And you think back to Newton, he was trying to figure out the motion of everyday objects from throwing a ball to the motion of the moon, and he did a really good job. <laughs> and he did such a good job that it took us a long time before we were able to make the next dramatic steps. But we have. We've been able to understand how molecules work, how atoms work, subatomic particles. We've been able to go the other direction, figure out how neutron stars and black holes, entire galaxies, and the whole universe. We really have a fairly good understanding over a huge range of physical scales. That is a tremendous achievement, but it also sets up a challenge. We are now investigating realms that are so far from everyday experience that it really requires us to be a bridge from very unfamiliar territory, molecules and atoms and particles and the strange features of the quantum world and black holes and so on, we need to be the bridge so that the general public recognizes how important these studies are mm. and how exciting it is, the wonder of science, the inspiration that you can get from the ability of this thing inside our heads to go so far beyond and really grasp the universe in a very deep way. So it's been a great time, 350 years, but the success also sets up a great challenge. I strongly agree with that. I think, I think that the scientific enterprise during the last 350 years is without a doubt the crowning achievement